recording. Uh, this is the third Hitters Club. So this is the third month that I've brought you guys together in the Fanatical Prospecting Challenge to just kind of like say, how are we doing? Are we following along? Are we keeping up? Are we having wins? Are we having struggles? What are we learning in the process? Um, and what's on my mind, you guys, right now is really about year-end planning. Um, this time of year, I really get serious about, okay, who do I want to be? What kind of life do I want to live? And how does that translate into what I'm trying to do every day? What does that look like for my time blocking? What does it look for my weekly top three, my daily top three? Um, and we'll go from there. Uh, okay. Shannon's trying to fix her volume. I'll watch if you have to leave and come back. Um, is my volume okay? Everybody hearing me all right? I got the same microphone going. All right, rock and roll. So I hope this uh, could be very interactive. Like this is your guys' opportunity to ask me anything. There is nothing off limits. We could go through any scenario or any opportunity that you want to chase down or something where you feel like I did it, but I've gotten stuck. That was the whole point of bringing these calls in because just interacting with pushing out video content and having no clue if it's hitting or what's working is tough for me. So uh, let's open up. I'll, I'll call on you guys a little bit. Um, thank you. Give me the hot water and the cold water. I'll get, I got to get hydrated over here. Uh, Vicki, I'll pick on you. Cause I've seen you a bunch. Um, what's been standing out from fanatical prospecting? What's been a, a shift in mindset or activity or behavior that's happened for you and where do you want it to go? Well, in a way, I feel like I've been cheating on you, Shayla, because I also picked up a book called the seven levels of communication. Uh-huh. And, um, I've been reading both simultaneously. I finished seven levels. I put it back, but also committed to fanatical prospecting. I love it. Um, I think a lot of the ideas are not new to me, but I've never taken the time to really absorb them and utilize them. But I'm not breaking through. I'm not at the point where I want to be. Um, I'm trying to increase the number of realtors that I'm calling. I'm having a hard time getting appointments with folks. Um, I did get an appointment on Sunday at an open house with a new realtor that I met briefly once. And she actually said it's a prize that I was willing to go to an open house with her. And I'm thrilled. I told her, use me as a resource. Anytime you could be working with another lender. So that's the approach I'm taking with newer LOs, newer realtors. I'm telling them, use me as a resource. You may already have a relationship you may not have a lead to pass along to me, but allow me the opportunity to help you, to assist you, to provide guidelines. Don't give me any credit. You can just turn around and tell somebody what the guideline is and be a hero on your end. So I haven't lifted my foot off of that. I've blocked my hour. I call it my gold hour, trying to make the phone calls and I'm getting distracted a lot. Um, I picked up the phone, incoming calls today. I picked them all. I don't know why I did it. I, I'm, I'm not allowing myself to put the distractions away. And I know that's something I need to focus and do. Um, but I'm finding that I'm not getting a lot of traction. And okay. it, it's challenging. I also got a friend from a, a call from a friend yesterday. She's a big producer. I worked with her briefly. Oh, boy. She told me what she was going through. And I remain positive, positive mindset all the way. I let her know, yes, this is a cycle. Anytime I speak with the realtors, I say, this is just a cycle. We're going to get out of it. Let's do something. VA guidelines. Um, so created, you know, just a, a new realtor I'm working with, with created a new VA um, and Home for Heroes packet. We created a flyer. She's going to go hit some heroes that she knows in her community. Thank you. But not making the traction that I want to, not getting the additional leads that I want. Okay. Thank you. And just one question, because uh, I'd love to hear from a couple of people of the same stuff, and then I can do some laser coaching on it. Vicki, what would you say, you know, the, I've been saying act one was from 2012 to 2021. Okay. Now I've been in the industry since 04, but, but I'm calling it act one because this is now we're entering into act two. Okay. In act one between 2012 and 21, that's a 10 year window. And if you guys go look at all the stats for 10 years, interest rates went lower and lower and lower and lower and lower and lower. Home values went higher and higher, higher, AKA higher commissions, higher you know opportunities. And there was enough ish houses, right? Let's call it, I haven't even done the math, but let's say it was a $30 trillion opportunity. Maybe it wasn't that much, but that $30 trillion opportunity, 
my belief was, and the way I found success was if I could take a good technician, somebody who really knows guidelines and loans and to think strategically and solve puzzles. I take a good person, a good human that, that is committed, honest, has high integrity. And I just help them become a good prospector. I take them from being a non-existent or poor prospector to being a good prospector. Meaning every day I'm spending two to three hours intentionally prospecting. I'm in front of people in a pre-qual, in a pre-approval. I'm calling realtors. I'm going to open houses. I'm going to networking. I'm having a break bread. If I can get you doing that two to three hours a day, every day, and you become a good prospector, you've got some time blocking, you blew up. I mean, I had so many of my staff, you know, several years, the lowest earner on my LO team was like $360,000. <laughs> like, and I'm clear that we were knuckleheads that were just good, good, and good. What I believe guys is the last two years have been transitional years, 23 and tw or 22 and 23. It's been like, we are caught on the inside of a wave. Like we come up for air and then boom, we just get hit again. And it's a beach break and we're upside down. And we're, we're not even sure where the, where the air is or the surface is, but I believe we're coming out of that the last two years, nothing but rates going up, 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 up and companies having to reorganize and lay off and do all the things that we've had to do the last two years. But this next act too, Vicki, in my mind, it might not be another 10 year run. I mean, maybe it's only a five year run before, you know, my AI robot is talking to Ken's AI robot and they're discussing the best way to shift a loan and financial and they work it all out and <laughs> they don't need us. I don't know. Do I believe that? Do I spend time thinking about it? No. But if the next five year run is maybe a $7 trillion opportunity, how are we going to win in act two? And I don't think because we did this in act one, that that's what it's going to take in act two. And what I'm telling myself, what's keeping me on my toes, what's firing me up as a leader, what's allowing me to double down is telling myself, Shayla, just because you were successful in act one, doesn't mean you have what it takes for act two. You got to dig deeper. You've got to expand. You've got to grow. You've got to get out of your comfort zone because I've never wanted to be a one hit wonder. That's, that's just a key theme in my life. Like, I just don't like a, who wants to be a one hit wonder. Right. And so how am I going to evolve as a leader to be valuable in this market? How am I going to evolve as a salesperson to be really conscientious, a good listener, like really provide solutions? How am I going to evolve as, as in my mindset, you know, just like the whole piece of it, how do I come around? So, um, when you were in that first act one, Vicki, where were you at? If you were good, good, where, where would you say you were as a prospector? I was probably processing back then. Okay. So I've been in the industry for a long time, but I got licensed um, and started in 2019. And I, and I wasn't a big prospector in 2019. I, 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 we moved my parents um, out of state. They had to move here. My father got sick, blah, 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 blah. Um, so I really hit the Guess ground. Guess what? In it wasn't required. 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022. Yeah, those are good years for me. I just, amazing years. Yeah. And, and things looked so promising and optimistic. And then it was the summer of 2020. It was just last summer where uh, we went on a big family vacation and then things changed. And that's when I started pro um, networking, networking, unlike I've ever done before. Um, is that one thing that I'm not good with is social media. I'm not good. I bought myself my little tripod so I can start recording myself. I bought it last week. I have yet to record myself and do any videos. But um, I've joined another networking group. I'm joining a Middlesex West Chamber of Commerce. And what I'd like to do is, this is part of my plan for 2024. So between my immediate community and the towns outside of my towns, that's my stomping ground. My plan is to um, become, make a lot of face, a lot of personal, not salesy connections with folks. So I joined the local uh, business association. I reached out to the uh, Rotary Club, not for networking, but just show that I'd love to do some volunteerism in my town. Um, but 
I, I listed 10 towns in my community that I want to go deep with the realtors as well as the community to show them I'm here for you. I'm here to support you. I'm in your backyard and then I need to be more visible. And I, and I know that. So it's okay. like a multi-pronged approach. It's Good. community level. Good. I think you're thinking. So the first part is always awareness before change. And so I think what you realize, Vicki, is that you've never had to be a prospector before. You haven't you haven't even learned the skill to be good at it yet. And guess what? It wasn't required. There, like we have so many people that were processors and LOAs or just straight up new that got in our industry and they're, they're, it was raining loans. Like if you weren't doing volume, you had to be good at dodging raindrops because <laughs> it, it was there, right? So I think the first is just an awareness of like, how was I? I will tell you, Vicki, the years before 2012, I got in 04. So that was an eight year run. I was just hungry and competitive, but I wasn't a strategic prospector. I didn't know what I'd do every single Monday, what I do every single Tuesday, had time blocking. I just came in and fought fires all day and was reacting to everything and was super hungry and driven. And I did a lot of business. I made 300 grand a year for like three years in a row. But a lot of it was not because I was driving the car. Like it was because I was just in running. Does that make sense? Yeah, so the first thing is awareness. The second thing is to go, okay, which skills am I really good at? Which skills am I weak at? How am I going to improve upon those? And also just like, what do people need right now? Are you guys asking yourself that question every week? Like, what do people need? Because as salespeople, we solve problems. We are literally out there to solve problems. And guys, guess what? We are in business. So we need to help people make money. Okay. I just met with a loan officer for coffee last week and he did 40, 50 million in those bigger years. And he used to be a pro golfer. And you know what he did is he goes, Shayla, I had like a group of guys, like maybe 10 realtors and we played basketball, pickleball, skiing, snowboarding, golf, whatever. I love playing with these guys. And I spent money on Zillow leads and I would work those Zillow leads and I would turn those lead opportunities into listings or whatever. And I would give these realtors business. Plus I play with them and I did a lot of business and he only needed about six to 10 great relationships, right? Well, guess what? For the realtors, there was this many A leads. There was this many, they had so many A leads that realtors could be very sloppy in their process of how they refer, how they follow up, how they qualify. They could be that sloppy because even if they only converted that much they, out of the A leads, they had a big bucket to work from. And then we would get spun off that amount and we would do our thing and we would issue pre-quals and pre-approvals over the phone and you know, whatever we did. And that was it. And the rates were like two, four or 5%. You didn't have to do shit, right. Of, of like really consulting and really like whatever today is a whole nother ball game. Right. And I mean, every borrower needs so much more. So now realtors, they weren't prospecting either. In fact, I coached some of my top uh, loan officers who do a ton of volume and have a ton of realtor partners. And I said, how many out of all the realtors do you know are excellent prospectors? How many realtors do you know that are excellent? And guess, guess what? I even called one of my biggest agents and I said, hey, do you think you're excellent at prospecting? And he said, I'm excellent when I prospect. I'm like, okay. And I said, how many excellent prospector realtors do you think are in our town? And I'm in a you know market of 500,000 people. And he's like, probably three or four. And he gave me the names of those three or four. Okay. It, it, it didn't require anybody to be excellent. The other thing is I don't think realtors were even good because it, there were so many a leads and you know what they did. They just spent money. They just turn on the lead faucet from Zillow or realtor.com or whatever. They'd have a bunch of leads. They, enough would spit out the bottom. Okay. So everybody's like getting tumbled in the wave because everything that we've done in the past is not <laughs> sufficient. You have to just forget about what that was. Okay. So um, thank you for sharing all that stuff, Vicki, because I think probably a lot of people would do it. Christine, I'll pick on you. How were you as a prospector between act and act one? Well, hi. So I am in my two week and one day of being a loan officer officially. If you remember, we met in uh, Golden and I was on Ed Powers' team for 15 years and I decided to go off on my own and rejoin Guilt. So <laughs> I'm super lucky. I landed with a team where I get a lot of leads from 
a real estate source. So my key job and why I really wanted to be part of this was I can turn a lead like borrower wise, like I can figure out how to get them qualified. I can figure out how to get them in the car with the realtor. <laughs> but the main focus and why I signed up for to be coached by you on this was that I need to turn that business into more business. So I need to get better at getting CCRs, getting, uh, making relationships with those listing agents. I started writing out my plan. That's a six month plan to go after the listing agent once I have a contract with them. And so just trying to be organized. I've done scripting. I think I've Listen to like a thousand of your videos, Shayla. I have, <laughs> so I'm ready to go. Um, so yeah, that's why I joined it, and that's where I'm at right now. I decided to be the main character now instead of in the background. Major life change, Christina. Yeah. This was only in August that I saw you. That's a huge, <laughs> huge deal. I was waiting um, for my offer letter then. <laughs> I did. Yeah, you were already in talks with Gil when you showed up. Yeah. Oh my God, that's amazing. Okay. <laughs> Um, so I love what you talked about. And I think we're going to expand on that, which is how do I take every existing opportunity I have and level that up? How do I squeeze more opportunity? And that is a perfect thing to talk about because what I guys, what I really believe about what is an excellent prospector, it is that person who has intention about what they are looking for out of an outcome and then is bold enough to ask. That's what chapter 14 is about, which is a little bit ahead of you guys, which is I'm, I'm with this listing agent. What is all the opportunity I could squeeze out of this during the 30 days that I have them in escrow or 10 days or whatever it is. And am I going to be bold enough to ask, but you first have to have the intention in place and you have to be thinking that way as a fanatical prospector. Um, so we're going to talk about that. And, uh, Christina, I would tell you that, um, a lot of people have been good skinners. Okay. You're a skinner. Wherever the loan came in, I could give you whatever shit loan or whatever, and you could turn that into a beautiful masterpiece. So now your, your strategy and what you're very eyes wide open, aware of changing into is now I'm going to be the main character and I'm also having to learn to be a hunter. Okay. Vicky, you were a skinner. <laughs> now you're a hunter, which means I can't worry about skinning. I literally have to wake up every day going, what am I going to hunt and kill today? What I'm looking for opportunities. I'm hunting for opportunities everywhere. And your mindset has to be that opportunity is everywhere. I have to create the opportunity. How do I do that? It's through the questions that I ask. It's through the situations I put myself in. It's in, it's in every person that I meet, there's opportunity everywhere. And if you believe that and you look and just and put that as my number one job duty is to hunt for opportunities. I'm a hunter now. I then have to learn how to trust a new partner to be the skinner. Okay. Cause if you keep trying to be the professional skinner with a little bit of hunting, you're not going to make it, especially in this market. You have to go, I'm hunting, I'm hunting, I'm hunting, I'm hunting. And then I'm going to let somebody else skin it. Even if they're going to do 70% as good as you would, and they're going to be twice as slow as you, who cares? Cause it, you, you are only going to bring the value if you're hunting. Right. So, um, Okay, that, that I'm going to talk about that. That's really good. Sheila, you said something just a minute ago. And I was I started to write it and I gapped out and I couldn't finish it. You said we create opportunities. Yeah, like what hunting means is that we. Oh, are you're saying ones. as a hunter, we create opportunities. Someone yeah. else fulfills them. Yes. Okay, got there's it. A, there's got to be a hunter and a skinner. Yeah, okay, and understood. right now it's super simple. Have a really good processor is your skinner. <laughs> we are hunters, processor skinners. There was a time where it was like. Shayla would get the lead in and LP one would do a quick prequal and schedule it for Shayla. And then Shayla would do it and then give it to an LP two and the LP two would prepare it. And then the process, then a setup person would touch it. And then a processor would process it. There was like a manufacturing facility to skin, to skin it. Does that make sense? Well, we, all that is gone, right? The national average LO is closing two deals a month nationally. Okay. You're in the top 1% if you're closing like six deals a month. Um, it's a whole, it's just a whole different ball game in terms of what that means. So, and hopefully the best of the best, of the best people are in the game. If there are people that are not doing a good job at their skinning and that's their job and they're still employed in our industry, then they probably have an attitude problem, right? And you've got, and you've got leadership that needs to manage that or manage it out. 
right? But we need to trust that if they're here in this time in 2023, then they damn well deserve that job. I need to trust them because I can't do this really well if I'm trying to do that. Does that make sense? Yep. Um, Kim, what about you? How are you uh, as a prospector in act one? I love your bat ears, by the way. Thank you. Um, so I'm newer. So I left corporate America about two years ago and got into this crazy world. <laughs> and so a little bit of, um, you know, how I look at this is a bit of a an opportunity because I, I missed the everyone's refinancing and businesses falling in your lap, right? I think if I would have gotten in at that time, I would have had a false sense of what this really is. So really, um, you know, figuring out this business, but then just been trying to get out networking, leverage my network to ask for people that know realtors, financial advisors, CPAs, right? And trying to network um, using my network and trying to have warm introductions is... I just haven't gotten on the cold calling bandwagon. <laughs> That's fine. I, I don't think you, you need to get on the cold calling bandwagon. Um, I just had one of my loan officers this morning say, just reach out to me and say, okay, I think I'm missing some part of landing the appointment. Like I'm getting enough appointments, but I'm just wondering, can you script it for me? And I gave him a voice note and said, blah, blah, blah. And I gave him actually three different voice notes. One was, here's how I'd call somebody after I saw him at open house. Here's how I just straight up cold call somebody. And here's how I would work a listing agent. And I just did that scripting. Um, every one of those situations is generally not cold. I'm always trying to use a connection to someone else or something else. Right. Um, so, okay. So we're going to talk about getting, getting leads from our network. I think that's really fabulous. Um, and how you've been doing it, Kim, as a prospector, do you say you're poor, good, excellent? How are you doing as a, a fanatical prospector? I think that, you know, good, not excellent yet. You know, I, I think how many, I hold myself how many hours back. a day are you, how many hours a day are you intentionally prospecting? I think two, at least two hours a day between talking to clients and then reaching out to realtors or getting into networking events and trying to meet other, like not just real estate events, but getting out and expanding my network. So a, a good two hours a day. But I okay. think where I struggle a little bit is that the scripting or that follow up, like, and, um, you know, knowing what to say when. Well, guys, we are looking for needles in a stack of needles right now. <laughs> Can I just tell you that? Like calling realtors and talking to realtors, you don't know who's vacuuming their car. And this is, by the way, always in November. You don't know who's vacuuming their carpet waiting for their house guests three weeks from now. And they've just literally turned real estate off in their head or they're so down and out or their mindset is so bad or whatever. Like literally there are so many licensees and, you know, hopefully 50% of them don't renew. So it would just like help the pile of needles, like come down a little bit. Um, and I think the same thing is going to happen with loan officers too. And I'll tell you, Vicki, why loan officers are going to get out of this business. Not because they don't love loans. There's plenty of Christina's out there that just freaking love loans. They love solving problems. They like the stress and the pressure. They like handing someone the keys. All of that is so gratifying and fulfilling for them. They love it. Why will they get out of doing loans? Because they realize I don't like to hunt. That this job is actually a sales job. And they will go, Ooh, I just not a salesperson. I don't have that killer instinct. I don't wake up every day going, there's opportunity out there. I'm going to go freaking find it. Like I had a guy call me the other day and you guys know I'm as empowering as it gets. I will see you for your strengths and I will push the shit out of you for your strengths. And I believe anybody could be massively successful in this business. That's why I coach. If I did not believe that genuinely, then I couldn't do it because that's just me. I have to believe that fully all the way through, right? However, I had a buddy call me who, who got into being an LO probably same two years ago because he started seeing person after person after person was $500,000 W-2s. And he was in a coaching, he was, he was an employee for the coaching program of LOs. So he finally was like, I should just be one of them, right? And he calls me and he goes, Shayla, I have probably two months of money left. I have two months left. And after two months of money, I would need to sell or get a HELOC on my investment property or something. 
And I just want your honest Shayla direct opinion on what I should do. Should I go get a full-time job right now? Should I like just get out of the industry? Should, and, and as he's talking to me, he's like using words like, should I just throw in the towel? Am I, you know, should I just kind of give up? Which was words that it made me tell, that told me he was beating himself up. That he was telling himself over and over again, don't be a quitter. Don't throw in the towel. <laughs> and I was like, listen, maybe the smartest thing you could do is actually realize that you don't like to hunt and get yourself aligned with an industry that is totally suited for your strengths. Like this guy should be in the music business. He's got so much creativity. He's got such groove. He is unbelievable at events. He can make friends with anybody, but he goes, I don't like selling myself. And I'm like, well, that's what we freaking do every day. Like this job is a sales job. And if you don't have that killer instinct to hunt, like, I just don't, I think you should go leverage some other company, leverage some other industry, because it's going to be like this for a while. And, and that's, by the way, it's always been like this. It's just, we had like a four or five year run that was completely abnormal that told, showed people what this job was. It wasn't really what the job was. Does that make sense? Like when I started guys, I made $1,800 alone. And I thought I hit the flipping lottery. You know why? Because before that I used to sell vitamins and I'd make $8 on a box of vitamins. And I was so passionate about selling nutrition because I'm big into wellness and big into like vibrancy and blah, blah, blah. And I was so passionate about what I was doing. I was making a difference, but I was making $8 a box of vitamins. And I got in this industry. It was like, I could remodel people's financial futures. I could set them out for wealth building. I can use my analytical strengths and spreadsheet and all the stuff I love to do. And I can make $1,800 a transaction. Like, are you kidding me? Well, I just need to do 20 a month. That was my mindset from day one. And I did it. Like, that's what I did. Well, people have been shown over the last couple of years that you make four grand or five grand a transaction. And guess what? The paperwork is easier in many ways than it was back then. Is it not? Oh, I got a PIW. Oh, I don't even need the, the tax returns. Oh, you're self-employed. I only need one year and the loan beam will read this. I mean, come on guys. Right? So I think the people that are going to succeed are going to be the people that just go, I love creating opportunity for myself and the stress and the pressure to own my own life and own my own future based on what I'm willing to put out every day. I'm into that. I'm into it. Like I just fuels me. I don't know why for me guys, if I go work a job and I have to work eight to five and I have to look at a clock, I'm the shittiest employee there ever was. I am. I will go as slow. I know. Cause I had a job at 16. I will go as slow as I can. I used to be a runner and have to drive things around for my stepfather's construction company. I would drive like under the speed limit. <laughs> okay. Which is not me because what was the point? If I drove faster, I wasn't going to make any more money. It, like it, so I know for me, and he asked me that question on the call. He goes, well, Shayla, were you born like that? Or did you learn to be like that? And I said, no, I'm wired that way. I am. And I'm glad you're asking me this question because I've never thought about it. But from a young age, I've always wanted to stand out. I've always wanted to be noticed. I always wanted to be the best student. I wanted to sell the most raffle tickets. I wanted to be the best athlete. Can anybody relate to that? Okay. And then you're probably still in the right career. If you're kind of like, eh, then may maybe you came to this call to have a therapy session to get out. <laughs> <laughs> go find uh, something else that you could dominate. Right. But dominate whatever you're going to dominate. So, um, all right, I'll pick on one more who, who wants to give me their, their prospecting and, uh, Ken, go ahead. I'll go. Okay. So I, I got in the business the same time you did. And, um, I, you know, when things started turning bad and like, you know, Oh six to 11, I didn't know the good old days like everyone else did. So I just worked really hard. And it was, yep. I remember, you know, every year was like more leads, more closings, more money. And, and then, um, and then I, I worked at a company that was into the core and so became a core student and, you know, obviously wanted to compete against the people on the calls and, and growing all the way through. And, and, you know, 2018 was the first little wake up call like, oh, wow, I, it was different this year than the years before. But I did a lot of prospecting. Um, 
I just, I, I, here's the, the issue I'm gonna be really honest with you. It's like, yeah, those are amazing years all the way through 2021 and into 22. And then I got that little simple, a little complex, like I've been doing this 19 years, I shouldn't have to work so hard. And, um, or I've saved enough money that I can just wait this out. It'll get better. Barry says it'll be better like in about at the end of the year, you know? And yeah. I just didn't do the work. And Kristen's laughing because we work together. And I'm um, Ken's number one Skinner learning to be a hunter. Yeah, <laughs> she's a new, <laughs> she's a new hunter with a massive skinning background. Um, <laughs> and, um, so like right now it's, it's, you know, here's the, the, the issue that I find myself in a lot is I get just, I'm, I call 15 realtors and they're all sucking wind. And he's like, well, pff, what's the point of calling more? Right. So that's, I mean, just being really honest and I'm doing better than most. And just luckily we've got the relationships from 19 years. Right. But I, 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 I prospect like two days a week for an hour. And then that's my, you know, we have, we just, so one of the, it. Thank you for sharing that, Ken, because that for all you new people on the call, uh, new work, Christina, that's your competition. We're old and tired and have too much money. <laughs> yeah. It's true. It's true. I got a shitload of money. So I could just literally, the other day I had a call with my uh, financial advisor and she did this whole Monte Carlo simulator. And she's like, well, you don't have enough, in, uh, you don't have enough assets right now to, to hit your ideal income number that you could live on for the rest of your life. Cause I always like to do these disaster scenarios. Like, okay, if I wanted to move to the jungle and never work another day in my life, like this is such a workaholic addict <laughs> statement, but anyway, it's me. So how much money do I have to have to earn this lifestyle? Right. She's like, okay, you're not quite there yet, but you could be like here and not never work a day in your life, which was an absurd which was an absurd lifestyle. And I was literally like, can, should I cancel all my meetings? Like, what am I doing? <laughs> you know, and I didn't, and I doubled down and I'll tell you, uh, having a bigger goal is really important. Um, one of the stuff that I'm doing for the LO retreat is I'm, I'm, I'm going to be talking a lot about being on fire. Like how do you be on fire in your life? Because coasting and drifting sucks. Yeah. None of us like it. Right. So what do I mean by being on fire? When you're on fire in your personal relationships, how are you showing up to those relationships? Are you giddy? Are you light? Are you silly? Are you creative? Are you thinking ahead? Like you've got somebody's birthday gift planned two months in advance because you're thinking about them. You know what that means, right? In your personal relationship, in your love life, if you're on fire, how are you showing up? How does that feel? What does it look like? At work, when you're on fire, you're chasing a big ass goal that scares the shit out of you but is get you to just do whatever it takes. Right. Yeah. So, um, I'm putting this exercise in front of everybody to really think about the other exercises that life has lived in seven year cycles. My husband came up with this at the other, uh, at the beginning of the year, and it's really been driving me all year to think about, but, uh, did you guys know that every cell in your body renews every seven years, like every single cell like dies and rebirths. So like in seven years, you have whole new eyeballs. You have whole new bones. You have new teeth, like every seven years. It's the weirdest thing to think about. So literally, it does not matter what you've done in the past. You can reform your entire being every seven years. So I have put together this worksheet that says like, okay, from seven to 14, what was I thinking about? What did I care about? Who did I surround myself with? What did I learn from 14 to 21? That was a phase, right? What, what did we care about between 14 to 21? What did we learn? Now we're 21 to 28. Yeah, that was a whole different phase again, right? From 28 to 35. Yeah, I had kids, I had a business going. Okay, now 35 to 42. Now I just turned 42 in February. So I'm on a new seven-year cycle. And part of that, Ken, was for Gail and I to level up our network. Number one, with people who are older than us. We were like, we want to hang out with people who are 10 and 15 years older that have gotten their kids successfully through high school and college that can, that can go, it's going to be okay. We, we want those mentors. We've been the one leading people up the mountain that have taken the most risks that have lived abroad, that have maybe been the most successful in our circle. We now in the seven years are intentionally trying to be those around those people that scare us. We just went to Austin, Texas, because we invested in this Austin surf club and we were by far the poorest people around. And, and it made, made, Galen more than me feel insecure. And it was like, this is perfect. Then we're in the right place we're around world champions. People have played a big level. This is what we've wanted for this seven year cycle. 
right? That place so, looks awesome, by the way. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I saw it a while back. Well, by the way, we just got pricing on the houses. Okay. And like the smallest house, much my daughter's like, we cannot get the little house. We got to get the bigger house. We have to be able to whatever. So we have this whole thing because this weekend I'm doing also the financial prep worksheet that I gave everybody. And so I went through three months of statements. I don't know when you guys have done this last, but you need to do it. You need to be eyes wide open about your finances. I went through every charge on my debit and credit two credit cards and categorize them. That was dining out. That was groceries. That was insurance. That was kid activities. That was shopping. That was Amazon. That was prime. Like you wouldn't believe how many charges I had for freaking Apple every month. 699, 699, yeah. It was like nuts, right? It'll piss you right off. And, um, and, and like these, these houses can are three and a half million to seven and a half million. So now I have a goal again, right? Now I got to hustle. And it's, it's like, and if you buy one, if you want a lot, you got to pony up a big ass lot reservation by the end of the year for a house that's not going to be done for three years, but it's a one of a kind project in the world with people that we really admire and want to be around and we're the poorest person on the block. Now, all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I got to giddy up, Right. So what is that story for you? In what way, how do you get on fire? You've got to dance with that place of not crushing yourself. Of I'm not good enough. I don't belong. That's dreaming too big, but you've got to get right up to that level. Okay. Cause what I will promise you is the things that you strive for today, you will look back in five years and go, Oh, like I've blown right past that. It's a stair step to get there. Right? Like I remember the first time even imagining making a million dollars a year, that was just like, holy shit, no way I could never imagine. I'm a blonde chick with a high school diploma in Reno. But once I met someone who did it and did it through fanatical prospecting and was dialed in, this is what I do on Monday. This is what I do on Tuesday. This is what I say. This is how I follow up. La, 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 la. And I'm like, now I have no excuse. I've seen it. If you've seen it and you believe it, you can achieve it. Right now, I just literally needed to go execute and figure out how to do it. And then you do it and then you figure out how to do the next thing. Right. So can you uh, and I and everybody who had a lot of success for act one are the biggest um, we're the most vulnerable in act two. We're the most vulnerable in act two because of that, that stupid mindset, right? When we were just young, dumb, focused and working hard and every year you're going by a little bit because you started yeah. at zero the people that were here and have gone way backwards and have had to lay off and remodel their teams and tear everything apart and start doing things they haven't had to do in six years and everything else, it's a much bigger head trip. So for, for all of you on this call, you should get excited about that if you're not Ken, because you're like, <laughs> I'm going to go smoke that guy because he's going to prospect for his two days and then he's going to get tired and he's going to go hang out at his cabin and just wait for Barry Abib to tell him it's been all over. Like that's where you, that's the competitive spirit that you need because that's your competition. Yeah. He's talented. Yeah. He's smooth. Yeah. He's got his scripting better than you, but you'll beat him in your drive, your hustle and, and being willing to be consistent. Cause that's what fanatical prospect is. Am I right, Ken? See, this is firing me up because everyone's smiling and they're laughing. I'm going to crush all y'all this year. <laughs> I can't so, wait for I, next week. I get more excited about rather than the money. I get more excited about seeing what position am I at in the branch of the company or whatever. I don't, yeah, so try it. Was there a t was there a time that you stopped looking at that too? There have been times when I stopped looking at it. I'd say in, in 2022, I stopped looking at it, but I started looking at it toward the end of 2022, like knowing I needed to bounce back and um, that it wasn't going to be better. And I just told a group of people the other day that like I just got too tired of being disappointed in rates not being where I want them to be. And so I – started taking more action. So it's, yeah. So yeah. here's the deal. It's how do you stay in your go zone? Okay. I'm going to give a whole talk on this next week about being a competitor. What we all have to fight is our own average. It's our default. Like you could wake up today and go, tomorrow is the day I'm going to prepare my lunch. I'm going to be healthy. I'm going to do blah, 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 blah. But then we wake up generally about the same time. We roll out of bed generally the same way. We roll out with 95% the same thoughts that we had yesterday. And we pretty much roll through the same person. And it's going to be next week that we do something different. Yes or yes. 
And it's the same thing about prospecting. You're going to get off this call and be a little, a lot more fired up and you have the same behaviors of the same, whatever, right? So our job as being a competitor is how do we fight through that average? How do we fight through our own default and level up? Okay. And everybody has their own default. For some of us, it's that we retract. It's that we hide out in our house. It's that we, whatever, we numb. Some people are drinking and smoking weed and whatever. That's their, that's their average. Cause they, it's like their safety net. Okay. So, and there's no judgment. It's just, we all have our own default that we have to fight through. And a lot of times we either have burned out. Like I've been on burnout many times. I moved to Spain. I moved 6,000 miles away from my family, my business, my everything so that I could heal. And I went way over here, Kristen, to self-protection mode. Like you said, Ken, stop looking at, yeah, I stopped looking at the numbers. I was like, I don't want to hear about money or whatever. I was still happy to cash the paychecks, right? But I went way over here. So now it's about getting in that go zone of being competitive, but not burning yourself out or getting psychotic about worthiness. And I'm not good enough and all that stuff. It's just like, no, I'm focused. I believe, and I'm taking action every day. Okay. I'm focused. I believe, and I'm taking action every day. And I'm not going to worry when it's going to come together. Cause it will come together. You will be the Ken and the Shayla of this next act too. They didn't know any better and just kept growing a, a little bit year over year over year. And all of a sudden that's like how it happens. So let's just work on a couple things. Um, all right. Number one, we are not here to make friends. We are here to help people do business. Okay. So a lot of times people are like, oh, I'm following up. We're friends. And I'm like, no, we're not friends. We're I really friends. struggle with that a lot. About trying to be friends with people. And not even the right people. Yeah. Because you're probably worried about being likable. Mm -hmm. Okay. We need that validation that oh. we are likable, lovable. And listen, that's fine. We can get that in other areas of our life and business. This is about you have a problem and I'm the right person to solve it because I've got this and this and this strength, because I've got this and this and this experience, because I think da, 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 da strategically, right? Like Kristen, if somebody's got an affordability challenge, can you come up with six different things you could look at to try to figure it out? Yes. Yes. So it's articulating that to the realtor to say, Hey, I've helped realtors convert three extra deals this year because they had a buyer that just thought no way in hell, it's not affordable for me, or they were told they couldn't be pre-qualified, but because of how I approach things and the way my brain works, I found creative solutions for them, put them on a path, showed them that they need to get in the game. And I close those deals for the realtors. I want to help you make more money and you can use my brain that thinks this way to help you. Okay. Really? I will like you, Kristen, if you show up over and over again, you care about you. me. <laughs> if you care about me and you make me money, I like you. That's it. But do those things instead of like, just like me. Cause I laughed at your jokes and I, all the stupid shit we get in our head about. Right. I just so wrote, if, make me money really big. <laughs> yeah. Make me money. If you guys are asking for an appointment, chapter 14 talks about this. I just recorded the video. It's like, what's in it for me? What's in it for me? You have to know my fear, my struggle, what's in my way. And then you want to meet to talk about different ideas that possibly could be a solution to help me be more successful or make more money or make things easier. Now, when we have a meeting, Kristen, we might not like each other because we're just different. Great. That's an outcome. Number two, what your problem is, is not really what I'm good at solving right? Like you need to be better at personal branding and social media. And that's what you really, really, really care about. And I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> like you want to figure out how to get buyers that are cold, talk to you. You want to work with your database and educate them. You want, boom, those are all things that I could do. Okay. Stop prejudging what they need, get in there and find out what they need and then decide whether or not you're right for the job. Okay. There's a lot of women on this call. You guys know that women, uh, historically will not apply for a job unless we believe 100% we are capable for that job. Yes or no. Okay. Ken men will apply for a job if they think they're like 70% capable and they'll just freaking wing it the rest. So ladies, if you're taking a meeting, you believe that you can do it. Just be bold enough to say that, right? 
I'd say, we're in business. Let me see if I can help your business. If I can't, I'll straight up tell you I can't. Because as women, that's how we do it. Okay? So um, when you're focused on getting meetings, because you were saying, um, I'm having a hard time getting appointments. Um, who said that? Vicky. The, that's the appointment. The appointment is ring, ring. Hey, Marie, this is Shayla Gill Mortgage. How are you? Can I pick on you, Marie? Hey, Shayla, doing good. How are you? Good. Hey, I want to give you a quick call because we just closed a deal together last month. And as promised, I promised you I'd close on time and I'd update you every single week throughout the transaction. And if I really, really liked you and how you worked, that I'd beg you for a cup of coffee to see if we could work together. So I just want to see like, did I do a good job, Marie? Did I update you? Was your seller happy? Did we do a good job? Yeah, all good. Okay. Um, well, listen, can I buy you a cup of coffee or meet with you for 20 minutes? I want to know what your goals are for 24, where you plan to get business, what your struggles are. I want to see if we could find a way to make some money together this next year. Yeah, Sheila, why, why don't you get back to me? Can you send me an email and I'll get back to you when I see a window of opportunity? What does that mean? Are, are you just booked? Are you out of town or what is yeah, that? Yeah, I'm pretty you booked. Mean? You're totally booked. Oh, good. No, so no, business? not totally, not totally. But uh, send me an email. I'm driving in the car right now and I'll get back to you when I see a window of opportunity on my calendar. Okay. I will send you an email, Vicki. Um, listen, I really hope that we get together because I've been helping a lot of agents convert buyers that have been cold and stuck on the fence. I also uh, have a really cool reverse mortgage product that I've never originated in the past, but we bought a company who's got reverse. So I think I've got some ideas, even if you're just focused on listings, some things that'll really work and help warming up your database. Um, so okay. anyway, if, if I can get 15 minutes, I'll get 15, but I think you're a solid professional. I'd love to work with you. Uh, so I'll put it out there and I'll follow back up. All right. I appreciate you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> what did I do that you don't do? Honestly, I, I over the past year, I had a realtor, um, a, a big agent in the area. She's predominantly listing and she did, she did two um, sell side in the last 14 months. And she's ador adorable. Like I love her. She's like a fan of mine. And she said, you got to call my guy. You got to call my buyer broker. So I pick up the phone and I call him and he pretended not to know who I was. And we talked a little bit and he went, I only do business with people who refer business to me just like that. And I said, I've had people talk to me that way before in the past. And I'm like, okay, well, have a good day, basically. And this time I said, well, how do I know I want to do business with you if we've never done business together? That's how I operate. So we hung up with one another. And then I saw him last month at a networking event and he came up to me. I was so mad when I saw him that I made an excuse about something that I had to go. And I realized I should have taken the time to let him know that I'm not a biatch. Um, because I was very professional, but I, I do what you okay. say. Stop, I, stop, yeah, stop. We don't know what kind of day somebody's having you guys. Like he literally could have just been reamed by his wife. He could have left a really bad conference with his kids. He could have had somebody that just cancel a million dollar escrow. And he found out he lost a $25,000 check. Okay. I don't care how people show up because it's not personal, right? What you need to be is just a competitor. What I'm trying to get is the appointment, okay? Because you're you're throwing up shit, which is fine because you've probably been bugged and whatever and you're stressed and whatever, but I believe that I can help make you money. So if she referred me, you must be awesome. I would have just spun it on him. Well, great. I can't wait to meet you because you're really good at what you do. I'm sure you are. And if you are, I would love to find a way to refer you business. So let's meet. You want to do a 20 minute meeting at your office or you want to do a 60 minute coffee and I'll buy you coffee. Okay. You see how I'm direct? Yeah. And I thought it was pretty direct when I told them, how do you know that you don't want to work with me? If I, how do I know that I would no, and, you know, you and so I was very friendly and he said, well, that's how I operate. And then he, he, he was like, I have to go. Well, I, so I'm yeah, like, yeah right, but I think you again. can do that. Listen, ladies, you can do it flirty. We can get away with so much shit being able to flirt, right? And go, oh, well, you think you're pretty good. You must be really good. I'd like to find out. So is it Tuesday or Wednesday? Which is better, A or B? Go back to your objective. Your objective for calling was to book an appointment. Yeah. 
That's what we all need to remember. That's what my team is all I'm focused on is how many appointments are you taking? Appointments, 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 appointments. Because I don't care if the appointment goes good, bad, or otherwise. I know if I do enough appointments, I'm going to find those people. Now, if he shows up appointment and he's still a total dick, you'd have to ask yourself, oh, how's this guy doing business like that? I doubt he would be, but he's probably just, that's his first line of defense for all people trying to get at his time. And the ones that he actually chooses to be with Vicky, he's probably pretty awesome with. You just want to be on the inside of that. Does that make sense? So I don't worry about how people show up the first time because they don't know me. They don't know how how awesome I am. I I I had met him at open houses. I, it was his, his, uh, team listing agent. I dropped off three goodie bags and he was always there. And it was like kidding around. Hey, Ian, this was for Kristen, but why don't you take it? And then I went to another house and I'd go to another house. So he brought that up when I saw him last month. He's like, well, I know we met a couple of times at those open houses. He wouldn't give me the time of day at the open houses. He wouldn't talk to me, which is fine, but I have to get better on just being on my feet, positive, let his, somebody else's attitude just slide off my back. Um, Yeah. Okay. I can do that. So one thing that you could do is just your, all of you tune up your communication to these three words, clear, direct, firm. You could be nice and you could be flirty with it, but you've got to be clear, direct, and firm. You're not going to get what you want unless you cut through the noise. If you're that person that's just bringing the treats, you're that nice person that brings you the treats and you get bucketed into nice treat lady. Like you're, you're, you're just neutral. You cannot be neutral. You've got to push through and they either really like you or really don't like you. It's got to be one of those two. If you're in the neutral box, you guys are your friend zone. You're out, (laughs) right? So be the competitor that's clear, direct, and firm and ask for the appointment. But remember, it's what's in it for them. The more direct a person is, the easier they are generally. Like Brett, Brent was just asking me, Shayla, how would I get a meeting with you? Like what works for you? I go, number one, you call me and you give me compliments. Are you guys giving people compliments? Genuine praise. Okay. People love that. That's tilling the soil. Number two, you tell me your motive and vulnerable. Like, Hey, I've got big goals for 2024. I want to work with people who are driven and professional who also have big goals. I've had some incredible meetings with some badasses lately. And I want to add you to that and bring to you what I've learned, but also see if there's a way we can make some money together. Can I meet at your office for 20 minutes or buy you a cup of coffee? Which one works for you? Clear, direct, firm, right? But the compliments is the, is the start, okay? So what I would do differently is, is say, she said that you are driven, you are take no prisoners, you're an incredible negotiator, like you're really good at this job. He has an ego, obviously, Vicky, right? So if I started out and I already told him how great he is, Then he's like, okay, you've got my attention. Now I better step up my game. Otherwise I'm just being a dick. Like you told me how great I am. Am I really going to be a dick when you told me how great I am? Does that make sense? It's a reverse psychology. It's like people, people jump into what you, their best versions of themselves. If you point it out. Yeah. Yeah. I really thought he was a dick until he came up to me last month and I'm like, Okay. Do you want to make, play play nice? Do you want to talk? And then I realized I'm probably going to see him again um, in a, in a couple of days. So um, I really like, I want you, you know, to get off this call. Probably. I what? want you to get off this call and call him again with the script I just gave you and book an appointment. <laughs> I've been thinking about him. I'm going to just book an appointment and just say, Hey, I keep running into. You. I know you're a badass. I know you're driven. Like I'm a go getter and you're a go getter. I want to see if there's a way we can make money together. Maybe not. Maybe we're not a fit. But will you take a 30 minute copy? Like make him deny you. And then it'll be awkward when he sees you again, which is my favorite. Then they're like, oh, I yeah, see you again. on his yeah. end, not on mine. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Um, don't, yeah, just don't, don't be worried guys about the yes or the no. Just ask, just challenge yourself to say, did I ask? Did I go for it again? Right. That's what you got to do. Um, and reapproach it with some other solution. Reapproach it with a niche product, reapproach it with talking about business plans, reapproach it with, I want to figure out how you're going to get things spun up between now and the end of the year. And if I can be a partner in that, like I'm willing to work. Um, all right. Uh, you also said uh, Vicki at the beginning about visibility, credibility, and profitability uh, in so many words, I'm trying to be more visible. Okay. 
just be effective because being invisible everywhere in my mind is like people, it does build familiarity. And I love that chapter in this book about building familiarity because if, like I ran into a top guy that I hadn't seen for like, I don't know, seven years. The other day I was at it. I was at a uh, conference. I run into like literally belly to belly, run into each other on the stairs. And then I'm like, Oh, Hey, I gave him a hug. How are you? And, but the, I was going down the stairs. He was going up. So it was, that was it. That was our whole inter- interaction. Well, a week later I called him and said, Hey, we haven't seen each other forever, but it was awesome running into you last week. Here's what I'm up to. Would you be willing to meet me and, and tell me all about your current mortgage company? because I'm learning. He gave me 16 minutes of his time. He opened up his books. He gave me everything because I had familiarity. Like it wasn't really a cold call because I ran into him face to face. Now I called him and booked the appointment, right? So you want to get visible for that reason. But if you're just visible and you're not actually getting the appointment and demonstrating your credibility, Kristen, of like, here's what I'm fucking good at and how I can help you then we're not ever going to turn that into profitability. I know a lot of loan officers that go to every realtor event, every, they're everywhere, but they don't do shit for volume because they they don't get the appointment and provide a solution and show I'm credible. I can make you money. Okay. The problem, Ken, is you're probably really good at this, which is why you do it a little bit. That's the right? downfall. Like Kristen's always had more hunger than me. He's like, like you, you get to a point where you're, you're like, I'm really comfortable. Like comfortable is the enemy. So yeah, so I'm I I'm still in being uncomfortable. I'm still comfortably uncomfortable right now. Yeah. And you know what? What's making us all uncomfortable is like not enough money coming in to pay the bills. And that's not fun, right? <laughs> that yep. is not fun. Yep. And you know what? Just having fun is really important. You guys like have fun with this dick guy that is like, I'm going to get an appointment, even if it's the most awkward and comfortable, annoying appointment, I will be the one to decide whether or not I'm going to put in the effort to help him. You are the prize. You are the prize. You're going to work your ass off. You're going to work for free on prequels, pre-approvals, weekends, resources. Let me decide if I can help you. I will straight up tell you if we're not a fit, but if we are, I will work my ass off to help you. These realtors are alone. They don't have somebody riding shotgun and sidekick. They aren't in sales meetings generally. We are such a value to them but you've got to assert yourself. So I hope out of this call, you guys got that intensity. You need to bring your intensity, whatever that looks like, but y'all need to tune it up about two dials. Lean in, be a competitor and go for it. I hope this was a valuable hour. It went by so fast. So good. Um, Thank you for doing fanatical prospecting with me. And um, this helps me a ton too. So I really appreciate it. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.